Do you wish you could learn how to dress more intentionally when you travel in order to boost your self-esteem? Hello style siblings, bonded through a shared love of feminine style and aesthetics. I'm your host, Tiffany Truth, and your virtual stylist for the day. I went all the way to Mexico City and styled a week's worth of fabulous looks so you don't have to throughout this How to Dress for Mexico City fashion vlog. In part one of this fashion vlog, I'm going to guide you through the first four days of my week-long trip departing from Calgary, Alberta to Mexico City. YYC to CDMX, baby! I'll be showing you the best and the worst places I found to eat and shop as well as art and architecture from around the city. If you want to learn more about how exactly you can find your own sense of unique feminine style, I highly suggest you hire a virtual stylist like, um, me. Details on that are on tiffanytruth.com and in the description box down below. Let's get stylish for our first four days in Mexico City. Day 1, Departures, YYC to CDMX. My day starts at 6 a.m. in Calgary, Alberta. I gotta go through Vancouver to get to Mexico City. This is the look, full monochromatic look, effortless, makeup-free, no makeup in airports, ladies. It's not necessarily. Let your skin be moisturized. And this is California. I'm leaving her for an entire week. It's my first week away from her. This is the fit. Here's our breakdown, ladies. Okay, top and bottom, burgundy, they match. Yes, I look like a karate master and I don't care because I'm comfortable, darlings. But I look a little bit elevated because I match so monochromatic always makes you look put together. I have a nice wool coat, I have a beautiful wool scarf, I have beautiful patent leather boots, and here I am in Vancouver waiting for my layover to get to Mexico City. Here we are boarding the plane. I took a little video here to see how good people may be dressing so I could get some inspiration for some fashion, and there was nothing. The lady on the far left here is kind of doing something with the headphones, as you can see, far left slide, but not enough to be remarkable. On the plane, it was pretty disturbing to see that human trafficking seems to be the number one crime out of uh, Latin American countries such as Mexico. So there was a lot of warnings against that of what to look for for human trafficking. Pretty sad, people. Pretty sad. Not into it. Here's some beautiful mountains as we leave BC en route to Mexico City. So I flew WestJet in Canada and then at Vancouver Airport, I had to arrive on Aero Mexico. So you're gonna see me switch over to Aero Mexico next in the next video clips. I wanted to make a couple quick notes here. Aero Mexico gives you free food, which I've never had on an airplane since the 1980s when I first started traveling. So free food, free headphones, full meal. And here we are five hours, seven minutes to go until we hit CDMX for my taco spot. Welcome to El Tizoncito, my first taco stop. Now, to be very honest with you, this was my first stop for tacos at like 11.30 at night. And this was my favorite tacos I'd experienced throughout this entire trip in Mexico City. So take notes, because I'm going to take you to a few others that weren't bad, but these ones were the best as far as flavor went. Day two, Mexican mall tours and more. All right, I wanna start off at a park. Mexico City is famous for its parks. There's over 100 parks in the city of Mexico City. I think that's pretty cool being that there's like 9 million people that live there. So this is my fit. Now I thrifted this outfit in Montreal back in 2020 during one of the many lockdowns we had there. And now I finally get to wear it out in public internationally at a time where I felt we were never getting out of lockdown. So I'm super happy to be here right now sharing this look with you. The fit is a 1980s crepe two-piece matching gold metallic outfit. It is actually a lingerie brand that was discontinued, made in the USA, and I find it interesting that this was actually pajamas that I'm wearing in a very glamorous, repurposed way, modern day, that's sustainable. So I think that's very groovy. Check out the fit, darlings. Get in, loser. We're going to the mall. Just kidding about the loser part. Liverpool is easily my number one favorite pick for department stores in all of Mexico. Let's take a quick moment to just appreciate this beautiful architecture, the design, the curvature, the texture, the lighting, and this is a mall. This is a department store, and this is how it's being presented to the world. The attention to detail here just, it's, it has me in awe, and it's just, it's so pretty, so beautiful, and we love the pink. What's pretty awesome in Mexico City is you can bring your dog with you almost anywhere. You can bring your dog to the mall, restaurants, even some yoga studios. So I thought that was pretty cool. 
And then there were these beauties. I found these on clearance, on the clearance rack of the Liverpool department store in the women's section. These are by a brand called Westies and they're made in Spain. So they're super high quality leather. They're metallic leather, which I love. It's got that kind of elevated Barbie vibe, like a mature Barbie versus like a kinder Barbie. I adore these. I fell in love with them. And the price point here was 30% off that 1000 peso price, which was around seven. 700 pesos 759 I believe was the exact and I got these for $45 Speaking of Barbie, I fell in love with this metallic Barbie clutch purse, but I really couldn't justify the conversion rate into $130 CAD for a Barbie bag. I found this one on AliExpress for $10.55. That's way more chic and modern. Hooray for deals. I love Westies. I found out that you can only buy it in Mexico. So that's something if you're in Mexico to invest in, get yourself a pair of Westies. And also if you're in Mexico, look up Mexican makeup in the pharmacy aisle. It's a lot cheaper than the Revlon, Garnier, L'Oreal brands. I needed makeup remover and you can see I found some here for under $5. It has all the same ingredients as Garnier does for triple the price. And I needed mascara just for the trip. So I found this one again for under five bucks. That's perfectly suited just for a few days there. Welcome to Tacos Casa del Pastor. This is my second taco stop on this tour and it was great. As you can see on the left, there's a Negro version of meat. It's black meat, blackened meat. I thought it was like a Gothic version. I called it the Gothic taco. So I had the Negro version and I also had the one that looks more orange as well. I thought it was great. I really like the Negro version. You can see the Negro tacos there, the Gothic tacos. Those were fantastic. But here I found the flavor was a little bit lacking. So it's not bad, but the flavor wasn't as kapow as the first place I showed you in day one. Day three in Mexico City. Let's walk through my look for the day. So I wanna go classic, feminine, and modern, and comfortable, and chic, all at the same time. You'll see that breakdown later. Now this is the makeup I bought yesterday, the makeup remover I used this morning for this trip, and I also used the mascara today that I'm gonna show you the before and after of, like how it looks applied. Also a hack here is this leave-in conditioner is exactly what a curly girl's hair needs, like myself, for under $5. It's a great hack in Mexico when you're traveling. So this is my under $5 mascara test you can see the mascara is applied on my left lash not on my right so the left is mascara the right is plain and bare it's just minimal it's just enough to separate my curly lashes here's outside okay so this is an Akoya con neighborhood that's not the greatest of neighborhoods now it looks nice enough right but looks can be deceiving which is why I take uber everywhere in Mexico I do not walk anywhere alone in Mexico for more than one city block so my uber is taking me to Coyacan market and it was only seven dollars during rush hour to get there this is what most of Mexico looks like people I think it's just really important to show you the good and the not so good places in Mexico because everywhere has has good and good and bad and I just don't think it's right as someone who's a traveler not a tourist to pretend like everything is just beautiful all the time because it's not this is what the majority of Mexico looks like this is how the majority of Mexicans live most Mexicans are not rich so they can't afford to live in cathedrals or even live close to the cathedrals this is basically what Mexico is. That's real Mexico in my opinion. I used to live in Mexico so I can say this as not just a traveler but a former resident there. So traffic is one thing in Mexico City you cannot get away from. It took me 30 minutes to get to the market and without traffic, it would have been a 10 minute drive. So just like heads up, you're gonna be in the car a lot. So just learn to enjoy it. Mercado de Coyacan. Fun fact, this market is one of the oldest markets in Mexico City. It was established in 1921, so there's a lot of history here. I wanna walk you through to show you kind of what is here. There's a lot more food than fashion. I was here for the fashions, not the food. So I did find some handmade Mexican apparel, which is exactly what I was looking for. This shop was a little boutique of wonders at an appropriate price point. I actually got that black hat on the bottom left of your screen. It was one of my best finds on the trip. It was under $20 and you can see me here pairing it with my OOTD that is coming up tomorrow that you'll get the full scope of here. But I had to show you what it looked like on. But again, this shop was very cute and everything was handmade in Mexico. 
Mexico. So I loved that. I would have bought more here, but again, I only packed my carry-on, so I had to be very selective over the items that I purchased. But this one was a diamond in a whole lot of rough, fast fashion trade that I saw throughout this environment. Just authentic, real Mexican clothing. Just absolutely beautiful. Tchotchkes is another thing I found at nauseum in here. I'm not a fan of tchotchkes, but if you are, go for the clay handmade ceramic types of tchotchkes, not anything plastic or felt or acrylic, okay? Just go for the handmade clay, wood, ceramic style, not, not the textile waste trash, okay? As you can see, the ceiling is very tight here. I am five foot seven, but in heels, I'm easily five ten to six feet any day of the week. Luckily, I was only 5'7 today because I didn't have my head blown off here. <laughs> okay, this blouse was $20. I wanted to highlight it because it goes to show that it pays to shop around. This blouse was not handmade, but made in Mexico. So it was factory made, but made in Mexico, and I bought it. It was 20 bucks. It was a great deal, and I wanted, to, wanted it to wear to the Mayan ruins. This blouse, the exact same blouse, was $40, and this was only one stall over. So it goes to show it pays to shop around and look around before you buy at these types of flea markets okay because you can literally pay double the price for the same thing across the street from Koya Can Market, there's a little park worth discovering. I found it just very charming. And again, here's the look. We're gonna do the full look scope coming up next, but we're, let's walk through the park first. Like look at these chairs and look at the molding and look at these beautiful agaves. And then we've got this really well-dressed man looking over us. So I just found a cute little neighborhood park like this, really sweet. And I wanted to shoot the outfit here. So this is my look. I have Tom Ford sunglasses on. I have a nice, PVC headband on. I have a knitted mesh inlay top. I have my elbow length gloves, which came in super handy on this trip. I have my faux leather flats that have scrunchy effect. They, I call it my Vogue effect. So they're not just flats, they're Vogue. And then I have my shawl, my wool shawl that I also wore in the airport. This shawl came in super handy as like an overcoat or like a jacket on a day where it was too warm to wear like a full jacket or coat. So here's the full look in action and my, my slitted knitted high waist skirt that's super versatile. Now, a quick side note about economics is that the disparity between the rich and the poor is very apparent in a place like Mexico, but this is happening everywhere. And the fact that this is 20 minutes away from where I just was, it, uh, the irony here is not lost on me, darlings, and it shouldn't be on you either. And now it's time for a beautiful disco dinner night out on the town in Coyacan, the nice part of Coyacan. Yeah, so it's interesting. This is literally 20 minutes away from where I started out in my Uber this day, and it's gorgeous. It's luxury. It's Beverly Hills meets New York Metropolitan meets, I guess, Mexico City. It's everything you would expect from a disco dinner party. I've been wanting to find a perfect disco dinner venue forever. I've actually dressed up in a disco dinner outfit in previous how-to videos, and I finally found the place. So this place just really impressed me. I love this. It's called Prime Steakhouse Grill and it was just fantastic. Service was impeccable, the food was unbelievable and it was at a very good price point because everything I ended up ordering, which was one very fancy mocktail, the risotto here, the agua chile there, that green stuff's agua chile and I got some really fresh garlic handmade buns to go with my risotto, was a total of $40 for my side plus the super fancy mocktail, which I thought was an incredible price for great quality food. Day four, shopping and sushi, in that order. Let's start with the fit of the day, OOTD time. That's the hat that I bought at the Mercado the day before for $17 CAD. This is a vinyl PVC flea market find that I got actually when I lived in Tijuana several years ago for $5. And these are PVC patent leather, beautiful rock and roll ankle boots. I paired it with a nice feminine touch, which is a faux fur pearl bag. 
and we are walking. I'm only walking one city block, that's why I'm not Ubering today, because I'm on my route to my number two department store looking for some deals, looking for some finds. As you can see, another reason not to walk too far in Mexico is because the streets aren't the greatest, but the trees are really pretty here in Mexico City. But again, the streets aren't the greatest. They're super tiny and narrow, and garbage collection here is very unique. It happens just right in front of you with just manual people doing manual labor and uh, staring you down. Welcome to Copel, my second favorite department store in Mexico. On this day, I was on the hunt for J-Lo, baby. I love Jennifer Lopez. She's the only mainstream pop person that I really dig. I think she's aspirational. I was determined to find her clothing line because you cannot find it in Canada anymore. I don't know about the US, but I know in Canada you cannot find it. So I saw some lingerie. We're going to so circle back to that later. But J-Lo, here, I hit the money pot. It doesn't look like much. It was a tiny little area of Coppel where the J-Lo stuff lives. But look at these finds. It's quality over quantity, people. This jumpsuit is gorgeous. It's a metallic gold mustard color with pleats. I just found this fabric so beautiful. There's our lovely J-Lo. We love J-Lo. JLo all the way, go, go. 299 pesos equals $18 CAD in Canadian, which is what I paid for because I ran my credit card in my current currency, which is Canadian. And this is kind of like what I was getting a look of it, what it would be like on my body. I knew it would fit because it's a size small. So here's some honorable mentions. I didn't get this top, but I really enjoyed it. And it was only $18. It was a really nice quality knit. It was a poly knit. This was another poly knit top that she has here. I didn't get this one either because I already have something like this at home. So I'm not going to overbuy, but I wanted to share it with you because her basics are pretty nice. And if you live in Mexico, you can grab this for $30. $13 CAD or 179 pesos on the Mexican dollar. So I thought her her line is small, but pretty impressive. I did get this because it was unique. It wasn't something I have. It's a sparkly V-neck long sleeve shirt, and it was on super clearance for only 199 pesos, which works out to $14 CAD. Such a steal. And for JLo, I'll buy it because I can't get JLo here in Canada. This is a nice honorable mention that I did not buy, but I wanted to share with you. It was a nice snake print fabric uh, knitted, knitted top. It was cotton and it felt really nice on the body. I didn't get it though, because I couldn't fit this in my luggage. So $23 CAD is what they came in for. I did get this one. I got the black bodysuit because I had to, and I was just being very picky because I only have a carry-on, but I did buy this one because it was such a nice fit on my body and only works out to $15 CAD. So quality and quantity worked for me here. I wanted to get the top coming up here, this salmon colored uh, cow neck top, but I couldn't get it over my head. So the structure of this didn't win for me, but I think if you're super extra, extra small, it would work. But if you have like a bust, it's gonna be tough to get over your head. But that was a 21, dollars CAD. I just thought the design was really beautiful, but not as functional for anyone over an extra small. Here's the lingerie I was going to tell you about. It's really cheap to buy lingerie in Mexico. So you can get two bras for $18. And these are really good quality bras. And for 18 bucks, I mean, in Canada, you can barely get one bra for $20 if you go to a retail location. So if you're a Canadian and you're traveling in Mexico or American or anything, uh, go there for lingerie. Clearance racks are my best friend and I found this really nice thinner top by the brand Thinner, which is made in Mexico, cotton top for a whopping 129 pesos, which equals only $9 CAD for me at the time of this exchange. And I love this basic knit. I don't have one like this, it's pastel, which is why I bought it. Look at this baby, I've been looking for a mini chain clutch for for like five years and i found one here in copel for 379 pesos only 24 dollars cad super high quality beautiful chains and these this type of style is really hard for me to find i don't often see it and another great hack about copel is it's not just good for clothes and lingerie it's really great for accessories the accessories there are bananas as you can see so of course i had to buy this and look how good it went with just the outfit 
that I was wearing. It's like it was made for my style because I like to add a little bit of edge to femininity. So this is just, this bag speaks to me. I was so happy I was able to squeeze it into my luggage. And then I found this really cute Barbie clutch. Like we were talking about the Barbie bags earlier. So this clutch is perfect. It has a strap so you can wear it on your shoulder as well for only $12 CAD. And I just, I love that it's an elevated version of Barbie and it's more mature than like having a B logo like you're trying to be like a preteen again. In total, my spend at Coppel was $110 CAD for six awesome high quality items. I was stoked on these finds. Here's a quick snapshot again of my day look before I change into my night moves. Sushi night out exiting Koyakon en route to Roma. All right, here's the BTS word of the street. I was staying with a friend the entire time. Well, not the entire time, the first four days of this trip. I ended up getting shuffled around quite a bit. So we're moving here from Koyakon, not a great area of Koyakon, to Roma, to a slightly better neighborhood. So that way I can feel a little safer to walk around and not have to be in 20 minutes or 30 minutes traffic just to get from point A to point B in a more centrally located part of Mexico City. M-O plus F, a Japanese joint with a very strange name, but a beautiful interior decor. Something most people don't know unless you're in Mexico is that there are a lot of Asians living in Mexico, especially in Mexico City, so I had to try the sushi while I was in town. I give it an 8 out of 10 sushi-wise, but the appetizers weren't all that great. But the sushi was definitely a solid 8 out of 10, so not bad, but not the best I've ever had. But I was glad I stopped by. And the interior decor of this restaurant just really struck me. It is so beautiful. It's very New York in the early 2000s when it used to take weeks to get a reservation at the hot spot in town, you know, Sex in the City vibe. My heels are chain link patent leather heels and this is a little bit more of the decor here Not sure if they have camels in Japan. Just curious about that one, but uh, hey there are ponds though I know that for sure So the water features and the ponds that are all incorporated in the interior decor here is uh, very much a chef's kiss to the interior designer And this is my look it was BDSM inspired all black everything black PVC corset black patent leather shoes and my black chain bag baby I loved it I felt great and it was super comfortable to wear this out for dinner so this is me walking a little more safely in reforma one block to the new condo now that I'm staying at a new friend's place for the time being more on that later now's a great time to like share and subscribe to my channel You've made it to the end of another style guide. Yay! Or if it's your first time, yay! I'm super happy I could take you on this trip while also giving you the best tips on places to find inspiration in Mexico City. Stay tuned until the very end of this video to get the direct link to my feminine travel style video that shows you how I pack smarter and more stylish for this seven day trip to Mexico City. In part two of this fashion blog series, you'll get to come with me to my favorite museum, both architecturally and with an extensive art collection. Hint for my art lovers out there, there's a real life dolly coming its way in the next video. I can't wait to share it with you. You'll also get a tour of my top priced, high quality hotel in the center of the city that I stayed at on this trip. And last but not least, I'll be taking you to the top of the highest building in Mexico City for tacos in the sky. I cannot wait to show you what I wore to these upcoming experiences to inspire you to dress to impress yourself. These videos are made to inspire women to curate their own unique sense of feminine style through wardrobe that also serves as your personal style signature. Remember, fashion is for sale, but style is forever. I'll see you on part two to this series. Adios. Bye-bye. Ta-ta.